prayer is not the key to everything but prayer must be involved in everything there is no aspect of your life that you should take away the subject of prayer out of that is dangerous theology very dangerous theology your health prayer your finances prayer your job prayer your education prayer prayer should be involved in every aspect of your life humorously i say it this way that when prayer is not the key it becomes the hand that holds the key hello everyone in this message you're about to listen to apostle joshua selman talks about how to pray against certain obstacles in our lives at different stages of our lives there are things that look like a roadblock and obstacle that would not let us move how do we move them out of the way also Selman is here to talk to us on how to pray over and against certain obstacles in our lives please be blessed to us. the first thing i want you to know tonight is that prayer can be taught prayer can be taught all men can pray all men should pray but the prayer that produces power the prayer that comes from a place of mastery is a product of training, is a product of spiritual education. Luke 11, 1. The disciples came to Jesus on observing the power that came from his prayer life. The Bible says at a certain place, the disciples came to him and they made a request. They said, Lord, teach us to pray so men can be taught to pray. John taught his disciples to pray and the disciples of Jesus pleaded with him to teach them to pray and when you read the account of Luke and even the account of Matthew he began to teach them several things about prayer so men can be taught to pray Luke 18 and verse 1 the Bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint it is a mandate upon all men that they pray first Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 the Bible says to pray consistently or to pray without ceasing first Thessalonians 5 17 pray without ceasing Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2 the Bible says to be devoted continue in prayer it says and watch in the same with thanksgiving continue in prayer continue it's one thing to start but it's another thing to continue make it habitual continue in prayer now for our text james 5 and verse 16 the b part james 5 and verse 16. i'll read the full verse it says confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed then it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man any righteous man no name any righteous man at all provided that man is a righteous man and he's taught to pray the bible says it availed much can you give us amplified amplified james 5 16. amplified puts it in a very beautiful way here's what it says the earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available which is dynamic in its working may that be a description of your prayer life from tonight in the name of jesus christ so prayer can be taught prayer should be taught and you are learning about prayer now in the name of jesus christ even though we're discussing prayer i'm praying for you already that the kinds of results you have never seen in your prayer life you begin to experience after tonight's teaching for some of you you will go to the place of prayer with the same excitement you used to go to an atm because you would have found a secret in prayer tonight the same joy that you have when you are walking to a bank or an atm that would be the joy you will experience in the place of prayer the goal of this teaching tonight is to take away the burden factor from prayer that prayer does not become a necessary burden you have to carry just to sign the register of spirituality prayer is a journey and those who understand the dynamics have found a treasure in the place of prayer may you find such tonight in the name of jesus now generally speaking um i have a confession to make that the the idea of prayer tonight alone will not give the liberty to do justice to this comprehensive and all-important subject 
uh, there are many dimensions to prayer if you are to be thoroughly trained and um, by God's grace we have touched on a few areas and will yet touch on a few others but I have a central point of emphasis tonight however I will still touch on various areas just to bring us uh, to the same page my, my emphasis tonight is to show you how prayers are answered that, that is the part I think many believers do not understand. We we'll still touch on a few things, but the central point of my discussion tonight is to show you the dynamics of answered prayer. Hallelujah. So the idea of prayer is at the fabric of every practice of spirituality world over. Whether it is Christianity as we know, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, it doesn't matter what faith practice, one area of agreement as seen by every faith practice is that prayer is a very essential component to defining spirituality it is difficult to define spirituality using any reference uh, and then isolating the subject of prayer are we together so prayer is a very cardinal index for measuring spirituality not just within the christian faith but across every faith practice whatsoever the one thing that is common to any and almost all religions is that they subject themselves to some kind of prayer very quickly what is prayer what is the bible's idea of prayer believers pray africans pray many of us pray i presume all of us pray but if we're to be honest, we'll see that the results that we get from prayer vary according to the level of knowledge that is invested in that prayer. And so God wants to bring us to a greater place of mastery. But to start tonight, we need to understand the whole idea. What is prayer? What does the Bible mean when it talks about prayer? Write this down, please. In simple terms, prayer is communication with God. A platform that allows for communication with God quite honestly broadly speaking it's it allows for the communication with or interaction with the realm of the spirit and any kind of spirit really but then because we are believers we're limiting our study to the God of the Bible God Almighty prayer in simple terms is a platform that allows the believer to communicate with God it is also defined as a platform that allows us to communicate our thoughts our needs our desires to God a platform that allows the believer to communicate his or her thoughts needs and desires are we following so far so you see that essentially prayer is about communication it allows us to communicate with God, communicating our thoughts, our needs, and our desires. Prayer is also extended to mean fellowship with God, a platform that allows for fellowship with God. So it's not just about needs and desires. Prayer is also defined as a platform that allows us to fellowship with God. In addition to communicating our thoughts and needs and our desires is a platform that allows us to fellowship with God finally prayer is also a platform that allows us to hear and receive from God to hear and receive from God the Bible says God is spirit the Bible says God is Almighty and you would think because he's spirit and Almighty mere men cannot hear him but the Bible tells us that men can hear God, men can communicate with God, men can receive from God. From Genesis to Revelations, we see men communicating with God, getting accurate responses from Him and responding to that which they heard or received from Him. So prayer allows us not just to communicate with God, but it also allows Him to communicate back to us. Hallelujah. If you're learning say amen. amen every time you think prayer think communication whether communicating needs communicating thoughts communicating worship fellowship and also a platform that allows you to receive back from God why pray this is the first thing I want to address 
why pray why is the subject of prayer very important i don't think there has been any time and i, I most likely maybe i'm wrong but um i stand to be corrected i do not know any other time in human history where there has been a global widespread emphasis on the need or the necessity for prayer especially within the continent of africa we have from church to church book to book seminar to seminar conference to conference preachers in their variety emphasizing the same subject the need for prayer the need for diligent prayer people have written books people have written voluminous dissertations on this subject of prayer but i like to answer the question why pray why do we need to pray it's important because most believers pray without knowing the need in 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 in, in all honesty I think most believers just found themselves in this drive to pray and in a bit to emulate those they admire they got into this subject of prayer it was not willingly so it was not with determination and understanding they just admired certain people maybe men of god maybe business people maybe elders in the faith and since the people credited their transformation to prayer many people just follow suit but you need a deeper conviction than that if your prayer life is going to be rich. So let's answer the question, why pray? What is the foundational um, revelation behind this call to prayer? Is it just to feel spiritual? Is it just to have power? Is it to ease the guilt of laziness spiritually? Why pray? I will tell you and I want you to please listen. The foundation... Or the foundational revelation that necessitates this whole subject of prayer is embedded in something God put within man I want you to listen please listen carefully Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 gives us the first biblical account of man's creation as we know and God said verse 26 let us make man in our image that is a very important word our image and after our likeness let us make man the first reason the foundational reason why men must pray is in the very design of man how God made man to function so the Bible says God made man in his image the image of God is a spiritual quality are we together now and then to function means the way men function two hands two feet to speak to hear and all of that now god gave man a very unique gift at the point of creation that gift is called the wheel everybody say the wheel one more time say the wheel as simple as this sounds it is a very 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 important subject that god gave man in creating man he gave man a unique ability called the wheel the power to make decisions, the power to make choices. And from the moment God gave man that unique gift, that unique ability, God designed that ability in man such that as far as he's alive, nothing should sustain the power to take away the will of man. The only thing that can take the power of man's will is death. So the moment a man dies, he no longer has the ability as much as the bible reveals to make any choice any decision at all upon the earth but for as long as a man is alive he is able to use that gift of the will to make choices but there are implications to giving that gift that gift meant that god would never assume anything about man again from the time man received the gift of the will man had a mandate to always verbalize his intentions verbalize his needs communicate his desires it seemed as if it became illegal for god to superimpose into man's space bringing anything at all without that man making demands of it are we together now i hope you know that with gifts come responsibility if i give you a car while i'm congratulating you for receiving the car keys it comes with responsibilities you need to know how to maintain the car to fuel the car the next time you call me to give you a lift i'm going to ask you how about the car i gave you 
so god gave man a unique gift but with that gift came a very serious responsibility this is the foundation for prayer if you do not understand this your prayer life will be acting you will be tired you will be weary you will backslide and repent backslide and repent until you backslide with no need for repentance again this is a lot of many believers and the reason is because they do not even understand the foundational revelation upon which prayer is built so back to my story god gave man a will and from the moment god gave man a will can you imagine that god in his might his wisdom would have to allow man to use that will that god designed his work with man from the time he gave man we a will to be a response system that means man would have to use that gift of will to communicate his desire to communicate the need for help are we together now and that god would not assume even though god left something in his dealings with man called his mercy and there is a reason why he left it there because there are times man would have the need but because of ignorance or oppression he would not know how to call upon god at that point mercy becomes another door that god can still follow and help man if god did not add mercy all men may die maybe within a week because you will be learning that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to and so there are many times we have received help in our lives that were not directly credited to our asking we did not know, even know that we needed it god left his mercy are we together he wrapped up his relationship with man such that even though he gave us a will he still put his mercy as the platform for his relating with man if you're following say amen, amen. so why pray matthew 7 and verse 7 jesus is teaching now matthew 7 and verse 7 why pray because god gave man a will and he desires that man uses that will the ability to choose the ability to make petitions jesus says it this way ask and it shall be given to you understand that this is jesus teaching ask he says and it shall be given to you we are safe to reverse it refuse to ask and even though it is available it will not be given to you then he says seek and ye shall find knock he says and it shall be opened unto you verse 8 for everyone that asketh receiveth who receives the one who asks not the one who wants many believers want many things from god many believers desire many things from life but the bible says the receiver receiving is a reward for asking everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh the bible says it shall be opened why do we pray the bible mandates that receiving only responds to asking matthew mark 11 and verse 24 mark 11 24 jesus again is teaching therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if ye pray not you are advised to pray when ye pray it says believe that ye receive them are you seeing now so we now connect asking to prayer and receiving is it making sense now remember it is only those who ask that receive and now jesus is introducing something between asking and prayer that the way we ask is in prayer so that we receive so we can connect this with Matthew 7, 7. That everyone that asketh in prayer is the one who receives. Are we together? Why pray? Because only those who ask using the gift of the will that God has given them receive. This is very important. when you have your phone most of us here have phones and um you have within your phone the ability to call call a helpline call a friend am i right on that now if you need say you have access to my number and i told you you can call me anytime did you know that if you fail to call assuming there's no network problem there's no recharge card problem and then you do not call me 
You see, you can be in danger, but I have bound myself by my word that if you refuse to call, I assume you are safe or I assume whatever trouble you are having is within your power to deal with it. I have taught you that the greatest demonstration of humility is prayerfulness. When you are prayerless, you are proud. It's a declaration of independence that you do not need the strength, the wisdom, the assistance of heaven. Are we learning now? This is very important. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. So every time you go to the place of prayer, you are making use of this unique gift that God gave everyone your will you are verbalizing your desire whether expressing it in love in fellowship whether expressing it as uh, receiving answers to petitions and whatever it is if you fail to exercise that will in prayer you will live a defeated life even though you are saved you would think being born again should exempt you from prayer there are many believers who are saved but because they do not understand the prayer ministry nor how to utilize this gift of the will the hymn writer says oh what needless pain we bear there are certain pains there are certain battles that are needless if only we know how to use this gift of the will to call for help hallelujah many years ago i used to watch wrestling there's something they call wrestling and uh, there's an aspect of that wrestling called tag team remember where two people fight two people one will usually stand outside the ring and hope that his other colleague does a good job but sometimes things go really bad things go really sour especially for the other one they will beat the living daylight out of him and while he's there gasping for breath the other guy is energized and angry just hoping he can touch him you see remember and he can stretch while the other one draws him back calls his brother but for some he can muzzle energy just enough and sometimes that can be the difference between winning or losing stretch himself almost onto death and touch the other brother and once that other one jumps inside the ring he can even defeat two of the people at once and within minutes victory is declared that's how prayer is that the man may be weak may not have the power but there is a system of assistance but that there are rules of engagement even though the other one is mighty in fact almighty in this case but then he stands at the other side waiting respecting his own word that if you believe that you do not have the power to run your life you show that you need him very fast still back to my subject of the wrestling there are some who don't even allow themselves to be beaten after the first punch they quietly that is wisdom because eventually they will still beg for help so why delay after you have been beaten so the first thing i want you to know is why we pray anyone who does not pray is not exercising the gift of the will that god gave him you are wasting the privilege the advantage and the leverage of an invincible god i hate to use the word ally but since he's called us co-laborers with him it's safe to say there is there is an ally that is indestructible the creator of the ends of the earth waiting to coordinate the resources of heaven to your advantage but the only thing he says we have not because we ask not not because satan is powerful men like em bounds will show that there is power that is contained in the place of prayer if only believers knew the unlimited resources that could come to them from heaven most believers would take prayer seriously it will not just be about impressing a man of god or impressing a group of people or showing through social media you are anointed the the, the need for prayer is bigger than that that your life literally depends on it how could you know that you are sitting before such a leverage and then reject it you have to be ignorant are we together again i give you my card say and that card cons con you know has some money in it and i'm telling you when you get to the mall when you get to whatever it is you have unlimited access you use the card all i need you to do is inform me and then you use it i don't need to give you it's with you 
but I'm saying the condition is inform me there is something I will tell the bank when you inform me and it makes the card active immediately you can roam around the mall in pain you can roam around while your children cry mommy can't we eat daddy can't we eat that card looks like there's money in it and you can arrogantly swipe it and it does not work because the condition is to inform me but if you are childlike enough to inform me in one moment you can fill your trolley with baskets of provisions oh what needless pain we bear we believe you were blessed by the message you just watched let us know what stood out to you in the comment section you can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos so more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages we celebrate you and see you in our next video thank you